Uh, these sessions are called Time Frame Breakdowns, which is, um, we used to do a, a morning report on FX Street uh, that was named Time Frame Breakdowns, and we're going to discuss how we can break down the currency pairs all the way from the weekly charts uh, down to dailies, four hourlies, hourlies, and then into five minutes uh, to try and get our triggers. What we should be looking for, I'm going to try and keep it pretty uh, pretty simple. I'm not going to overcomplicate things. Um, some analysts or traders have an array of uh, technical indicators, moving averages, um, oscillators on the charts. Um, I do believe that um, you only need a certain amount. You need a certain amount for support and resistance. You need a certain amount to uh, to indicate your breaks. If you've got a basic uh, knowledge of chart formations, Japanese candlestick formations, and a good uh, a good background into uh, what the oscillators that you're using actually mean, then um, there is no need to to overcomplicate. Um, Overcomplicate your uh, your trading analysis or your technical analysis. Okay, the currency pairs that we're going to discuss today are all the yen crosses. We've got dollar yen, Aussie yen, and euro yen. We might even have a look at sterling yen. It's not a currency pair that I trade, um, just on the basis that I find it extremely volatile. And uh, I'm not saying that I like slow moving pairs, but sterling yen. Uh, you really can get whipped around, especially down in the uh, in the shorter time frames. Okay, the settings that we've got on the charts, we've got. Uh, I'll just click onto here and it will show you all the settings. You know what we've got? How many pivots on it? Okay, we've got the moving average. We've got 20 moving average. We've got the 50 moving average. And we've got the 200 moving average. We've also got our pivots, support and resistance. Uh, for today. Down the bottom, we've got the RSI, the Relative Strength Index, and that's set to 14, the normal settings. We've got the MACD settings 12, 26, and 9. And we've got our Momentum Indicator uh, set at 12. One thing that we do do, if anybody has been following the blog um, or came to the uh, the webinar last week, one thing that we always do is we just draw a central line on our RSI. Some chart packages already have that on there, but this is really to to give us a view on whether or not we're in a bullish or bearish trend. A lot of the time, uh, the market will move back to the 50 level, only to push lower again. Um, so while we're underneath the 50, we consider ourselves to be in a bearish trend. Above the 50, in a bullish trend. We use MACD for the purpose that it was uh, it was set out for, and that is to show us conversion and diversions. Um, I don't really use it. I sometimes use it for crossovers um, and, and the crossing the zero line, but its real purpose is to show us. Divergence and a lot of people, a lot of traders do use crossovers. And I do find that you can. The crossover is a moving average. So if you want to put moving averages on your chart, have them up here. Okay. This is to show divergence. And here you can see a divergence here on this dollar yen weekly chart. Chart made lower lows. Okay. MACD made higher lows. We got the cross after the, uh, after the higher low. And that's warning of an impending change of uh, change of direction. Okay, momentum. Markets move on momentum. If we're below zero, okay, we're in the sell zone again. Above zero, we're in the buy zone. We also look to our momentum indicator and our RSI for possible uh, divergence. So this is how we set out, or this is how I set out. My charts. Okay. Here we've got the dollar yen chart. This is the weekly chart. As you can see, we had a strong trend line here. 
moving really all the way off the 2007 high uh, in July. Clips in August uh, 2008. Again, holds the trend line. Here we've got our divergence. We've made a wedge here, okay? And we've broken the wedge in the week of the 22nd of March. Note how we also pushed up through our moving average, okay? Stopped and paused at the 50, simple moving average, and then pushed higher again. This week, we are coming back slightly, but wedge formations are normally quite impulsive, okay? So you should be expecting a move up to, towards the previous higher and towards the sort of 10,000 mark possibly in this, uh, in this pair. Okay, we're going to break it down onto the, uh, onto the daily chart. I don't know what the RSI is. I've had these all set earlier. Let's just put that on. If anybody wants to ask any questions during the webinar, please feel free. We are going to, well, I am going to try and wrap it up by about 5 to 10 to um, 12 UK time, just because I obviously want to, I don't expect anything to happen at the B of E, but I want to be about when it happens. Yeah, we'll show the four hour chart in a second. We'll just break it down from the weekly at the moment. Okay, so the weekly chart, or the daily chart, okay, we break the high, we break our 20 moving average here. This is showing us that we're in a possible change of direction, change of trend, okay. It also breaks the 50 level, okay. RSI, can go oversold and it can stay, sorry, go oversold or overbought and it can stay overbought or oversold for, uh, for an extended period of time. Just because we're overbought, oversold does not mean that we're going to correct. Okay. What I have found is that if we use the, the 50 line for confirmation of, of trend change, um, then we get well, we get more winners than losers, basically. Okay, so we had our break up here. We broke the uh, the 20 SMA, moved higher. Okay, came back to test, and here we had a doji day at the 20 SMA. Okay, we also were holding on to the 50. We were above the momentum. Okay, we rallied higher. Again, holding on, holding on, holding on. Divergence at the top. You notice here. Okay, we made a higher high there, a lower high, a lower high, and a lower high. Okay, so that was your signal to get out of this trend or this upward trend. We then corrected lower in a choppy three wave correction. Form this corrective channel. Again, we get a break here. If you notice momentum up, we've got a MACD cross there, RSI up through the 50, a Doji Day on or above 20 SMA, and, uh, and the pair rallies up. Okay, so what can we expect from here? Okay, impulsive move higher, corrective move lower, and then an impulsive move higher. 